All right, guys, I am back again with another video. And in this video, I want to take a chance to show you a quick trade that I made on the micro e mini S&P 500 index future. Um, had a nice little trade and I use fractal levels. Fractal levels are my main source of trading. Even though you see me using a lot of Ichimoku, my main source of trading is fractal levels. And I'm going to show you just how I made this trade and set the trade up well before the um, market got to that level. I already knew where I wanted to have my entry. My, my stop loss is based off of, um, you know, my money management. So I want to take a chance to show you that and let you see how that goes. So it's going to be a live trade. Just happened not long ago. Um, the market's getting ready to close down for net for the two hour time period. So I am out of the markets right now and going to show you what I did today. All right, guys. So here we go. Let's get down with this. All right, guys, so you could see I already, um, the video was already recording, and you could see I'm setting up my trade, setting up my levels where I'm looking to get into the market. So basically, you could see, put my stop loss above the previous high fractal. Um, my profit's going to be, my take profit is going to be set at um, a measured move one-to-one -one ratio, and I'm going to show you that in a little bit. Um, Let's see here. I'll talk you through this in a second. I'm wondering why I didn't get rid of that. <laughs> okay, there we go. So that should be gone so I can show you what's going on. So basically we see the market come down, break this level here, which was this fractal here. Previously the market was breaking these bull fractals and the market was continuing higher. Well, it broke this bear fractal. So what I'm looking for is the market to retrace and then pull back to that level. That's why I put this sell limit order in and look for that um, short at this level here. And I make it into a zone because I'm using these wicks. Now my stop loss is at this um, previous high fractal. And what I like to do basically, depending on how big my stop loss is gonna be. So let's suppose that basically, I'm talking about maybe having a three point stop loss or a four point stop loss or whatever. The main thing that I'm gonna do is make sure that Wherever I get into that market, I'm going to place my stop loss above. So if the four point stop loss took me to this point, so I'm, I'm working my stop loss down. I'm working my entry down. So what I'm doing is this is going to be where I start my stop loss. Then my target would be, let's say, four points if that was going to be the case. If four points took me here, good. If four points took me there, good. If four points took me down here, then I would probably try to um, move it tighter. I can move a tighter stop loss, but I want my four point or whatever it's going to be. Say you have a stop loss that's five points, eight points or whatever. You want it to be in that zone and above that previous fractal high. So you have to set your trade up to that point. Now, if I couldn't reach those t limits, um, then I wouldn't be able to get into the trade unless I cut contracts. In this case, I'm using four contracts, as you could see. So I'm just going to be sitting here waiting for the market to trigger me in and I'm on five minute time frame. Um, that's what we got going on. Let me move this so you could see right here. There we go. So now basically we'll just have to wait a little while and watch as price moves up. And you can see I already got my limit order set already. So already knowing where I want to get into the trade. Everything's already set up. I already know where my stop loss is. I already know where my take profit is. Okay. Now 
Now, one thing I wanted to see was the market was making lower lows here. So it appears now we're going to have maybe a higher low. We'll see. Um, we don't want to see the market violating these lows because that's where then the market probably is not retracing at this point yet and still continuing with the downward movement. So we'll see what the market does here. I'll try to talk you through this. I just had it planned. I just had the video recording, but really wasn't talking at that point. Really don't even have to sit here. I already have everything set up and don't really have to even watch my trade. Okay. And this candle just started here. You could see we got another four minutes to go. So we won't be getting triggered in on this candle. <laughs> well, I don't know. We could, but. I already know what happened, so it already happened. So I'm telling you after the fact now. But a lot of people would say you trade after the fact. No, I'm showing you before the fact, but after the fact, because I'm showing you my trade setup that I took before the fact, before it ever happened. And this is the way that I'll let members or anyone else know where my trade setup is. But basically, once I show you how to really trade these fractal levels, you really don't need me to tell you a trade alert or a trade setup. You need to just look for the trade setup and then use a lot of times I'll use price action if I'm not able to get in, if I'm not going to set a limit order. In this case, I set a limit order and sometimes I'll use just price action at the level because price could go right through my level. All right. And trigger it could trigger me in, go through my level, take out my stop loss and then I lost the trade. But you know, if I already have a determined amount that I'm going to lose, I always look at a trade as a loss from the start. It's basically like loaning money to one of your relatives. You say, well, OK, yes, they want to borrow $100. I'm going to loan it to them. I may never see it again. And that's what you're thinking when you take a trade. Hopefully you get it back. But if you don't, you know, you loan money to a relative. You may never get it back. Same thing with your trade. Your trade is, is a relative. And once you set that entry and you're triggered in you're automatically in the loss losing um category till the market is actually till the trade is over so i always look at the market like that so i know if i can't afford to give my relative a hundred dollars or whatever it may be it's going to be the same thing with your trade can you afford to have a stop loss that's $200, $500, $1,000 or so forth, whatever it's going to be. Can you afford to have that stop loss, that type of stop loss? If not, don't, don't do the trade. Same thing with a relative, if not don't give them the money. But if you can afford to give it to them and it's not going to hurt you if you don't get it back, same thing with your stop loss. Look at it like that. Now we're pushing up to that level. We got a minute and 21 seconds on this candle. And I'll show you here, um, since I already know what's happening, watch as the market gets to the zone and you can kind of feel safe about your stop loss when you see the reaction of the market at the zone on the candle that gets into the zone or moves up to the upper level of the zone. If it just goes through that upper level, you're kind of worried about it and you, you know, you may not, you may be stopped out. And that's why sometimes you, you can use your price action to get into the trade instead of setting a limit order. Like I do, I'll set a stop order where I'll be below the market and let the market trigger me in. So if I wanted to take a trade here at this point, I will put a stop limit here and then let the market come down to me, which would be the same thing up here. If the market went up above my zone a little bit. I'll put a stop order here and then let the market trigger me in or else I'll watch the price action and I'll put a stop order at the low of the previous candle and let the market trigger me in, at, in that way. So there's a couple ways you can enter the market, but I'm basically letting you see that you should already know your trade beforehand. I knew the trade beforehand 
And if it doesn't go my way, if it doesn't come to my level, then I'm just out. I'm just out. I cut the trade. I take that trade off the table and look for it again. This is what I do the whole day trading um, futures market on the five minute time frame. I'll just look for this setup only. Well, not only. So what I'm looking for when I'm trading on these five minute time frames on the futures market is you could see here I got a moving average. That's the 21 period EMA. I have that. I have this 200 period EMA and then I have this um, VWAP. So I'll use the VWAP for bounces on the level and I'll also use the 200 for um, confirmation of the VWAP level. So basically what I want to see sometimes this 200 will be below the VWAP and if the market violates VWAP, I still use that 200 as a buffer or if it's above it and the market comes above. So you'll probably, I'll probably take some trades and show you some of those um, VWAP entries. So I'm basically looking at bounces off of support and resistance levels, which would be my VWAP, my fractal levels and my 21 EMA. Those are the trades that I'm taking. Those are what I'm looking for. Um, and you could see here, I already have this one set up. A little bit boring here watching this paint dry, right? <laughs> we need to switch the color of that paint to green. We got red paint right now. Why did they get this red paint? We need green paint. Then we'll get for the red paint a little bit later. But see right here, I was looking at this and I was like, oh, we're not going to get to my level. Mark is going to just continue to the downside. Um, and you could use fibs to look at a level also, also, but I really don't need to do that. I already know where my levels are consistently. The market comes back to my levels. Um, and in a good trend, if I get two or three of these levels, then I'm good to go. If I only get one all day, I'm good to go because that one could be a good, pretty good runner. All right. And I pretty much trade the market this way, period. It doesn't matter what time frame it is. So only thing on the, like a little bit different with Forex is the market's a little bit, I think it's a little bit more stable when I look at the price action, like with the futures, I still have volume. Um, it's controlled, it's centralized, but with the Forex market, it's not. So you see a lot of the volatility is really crazy sometimes and you really can't count on volume since the market's uh, not centralized you don't really the, the volume is not what the true volume it's not what you're really seeing it's just basically your broker's volume but you're not seeing all the volume and then VWAP doesn't I mean, I tried it with Forex and it appears to work, but I just really don't know. So I don't really use it with Forex. Um, just pretty much ma mainly use the 200 and the EMA, the 21 EMA. So we're pushing up here. We still have another minute left on this candle. Um, You could see we almost have basically like a flag pattern. So when you see the market give you a big drop straight down like this, kind of look for a flag pattern to correct itself. And what I look for is you could see the angle here, these lows, and I'll probably be drawing it out on the, on the chart. I think I did that as the market was moving. This is a 49 minute setup here. So total 49 minutes, basically, I think. And that quick time, I made $400. 
So this candle is ending right about now. New candle comes in. Very close to my level. Let's see what we get. So guys, really when the market was down here, I already knew where I wanted to catch my trade as the market was moving down. I already knew where I wanted to catch a short trade. Um, I knew my zone right here was where I was gonna be looking for a short trade. And you can see, it's pulling back to my zone. Now here I was like, oh, it's gonna just go again and just miss my level. I've had that happen before. I had that happen a lot, matter of fact. I have it happen a lot where it goes right through my level also. That's why sometimes I think like for some people it's better. I'll show you a way that I walk this zone. So what I also like to do is this. I'm gonna show you when the market moves higher. So when the market moves up through my zone, I won't put a limit order because that way I'm not triggered yet. But what I really like to do is this. I just wanted to put a limit order this time really to show you that we already know where we wanna trade prior to the market ever getting to that point. Your whole trade should be set up. You should know everything you wanna do. Stop loss, target, profit target, and everything. So we're triggered into the trade right here. What I usually do is now, the market's into my zone. All right, I don't put an entry order yet. So my first entry order would be uh, a buy stop right here. I mean a sell stop, sorry, right here. But as the market moves higher, I don't rely on the break of this low. All right, I'll rely more on the level of the zone as the entry point. All right, so now I'm basically trading the level. So my philosophy of trading is I need a level, a signal, and a trigger to trade. And I always, you always need the level or else what are you trading? So I already had the level and my signal and trigger would be, the signal would be this level right here, all right? And my trigger would be breaking that level. Now I'm drawing this, trying to show you almost like the lows that you could see the market's making higher lows, but also like a flag pattern you could see because you had this drop and then basically a flag pattern here. And then you're breaking these, you're making higher lows here as you could see, I'm trying to show you that, all right? And so with that said, I really want to put an entry a lot of times at that low. But now when the market gets this high up into the zone, I'm going to put an entry order right here, a, buy, a sell stop right here. So now the market will come down to trigger me instead of just going right through my level and going straight on up. Now, even that's close, but I like to wait for it to get up to the top and then I'll put a sell stop right at the bottom of the zone. So the market moves up there, put your sell stop in there now, and then you still have your same level stop loss and target. Um, I'll show you how I got the target level. It's a one-to-one -one ratio level. All right, so this is a good area to get into the market because you have a like a, a zone, a resistance zone that's going to hold the market back supposedly. All right, and the market honors these levels a lot because it's a previous level of minor support and resistance, a minor res resistance level. And then you could see the market came down, made this flag pattern, then came down. I've looked at this as a flag pattern, but not really now. It's pulled back too deep, all right? But you could see these higher lows. So until we break these higher lows, we're not getting into the trade really. And if I'm using price action, that's pretty much where I would be setting up my entry right there. So I figured out my target basically from, I did the one-to-one -one ratio, one, two, three, four, are A, B, C, D. A, B equals C, D. So I'll show you that, I'll be showing that. And what was a real good sign to me was this rejection that the market was showing up at the upper level. The market was really rejecting this level and I feel pretty confident of, of that. Okay, and I wanted to be a little bit above this this wick right here because the market likes to a lot of times come right back to these levels pretty close, like right smack dab on. 
so at this point I was close enough to that level um, had my stop loss a little bit ab above it and now I do like that little rejection we had so normally I would have an entry level set there or else I would have walked the zone like I told you I'd have my entry where it is right now anyway I would have got in with a stop order instead of a limit order so there's where I'm showing you I basically would get into the market but see look at the what helps me I've eliminated this risk right here by getting in here I eliminate this risk with price action entry all right, so I don't really wait for that low. I'm already in the market, which eliminates some of this risk, giving me a bigger stop loss. All right. So therefore, getting in at this level reduced my risk. All right. And then you would have got triggered there. You see, you would have gotten triggered. And the market slowly doing what it does. On here, I was basically trying to show you. You could see you're breaking these bull fractals here, each one. And the market pulls back to these levels. Now, here you broke through the level and you pull back to the 21. But now I'm marking my one-to-one -one ratio. I have an issue with my mouse, so forgive me with that the mouse keeps on double clicking and won't go to my level where I'm trying to set it double click there again okay so here we go so now you can see the high right here so this would be a B C and we're shooting for D so I'm gonna move my take profit to that level all right. Now at the end, I move it down a little bit lower. You'll see me take it a little bit lower than that. But that's where my take profit is. I already know where everything is that I want to do and so forth. Now, if I'm swing trading and I feel like if I look at the daily time frame and I'm trading like Forex or something, I'll probably do the same thing on a daily time frame, but I'll let the market go much longer than this but on a daily time frame with um, that kind of a, a move would be pretty good profit for me all right so I really I don't consider this scalping really because I'm not I'm not in and out really quickly I guess you could say but it is kind of like scalping but you could get about three good trades like this a day on the um, micro e-mini even on the regular e-mini S&P 500 you'll get a good three or four trades like this per day and if you really want to learn this stuff guys just visit my website because this is what I'm teaching you, how to trade these fractal levels, how to get into these markets. I basically just explained a lot to you. A um, little bit more price action talking stuff to get into the market. But so, you know, I always know that like this is your one, this is your two, three, and then four is your target. So A, B, C, D. Either way you look at it, I'll call this the two or the B. You always, that's going to be like your first target level. And you could ha usually take some profit there. So I could have taken half off the table there or whatever. This level is a main important level because you need to get through that level or else you're going to probably see the market ranging. So here it looks like the market's coming right up into that level very strong. Um, and that's what I'm showing you. I want to get through that level because that level is going to be a level that could hold me and hold the market. And we can see ranging at that point. And you want to either take profit there or try to assess if the market's going to get through there. In this case, I, I waited, tried to see if it was going to get through there, and sure enough, it gets through there. Big strong candle here. 
$210 in the pocket. Really quick money there. Now here's where I was kind of thinking like, is this level going to hold? But I gave it a chance, gave the market a chance to do what it's going to do. So it was kind of like we had still, this candle was only four minutes in. Well, actually a minute in and it looked like it was going to hold that level. I was debating if I should put my stop loss down here now at this point. So I would move my stop loss. All I do is move my stop loss uh, to the levels where I look to, like I'll move it down to this point once this candle closes pretty much. And then I locked in this profit here. Okay. Roughly at 250 pip pro sorry, $250 profit right here. So that candle, I uh, don't know how long it has. I can't see it. But it would probably have been a good thing to put that stop loss there. And there I go. Putting that stop loss above that high. Mm, that's my other software using my uh, Thinkorswim platform. Guess the market's closed. So the market closed up now. And that'll be my last e-mini trade for the day. But this is um, fairly consistent trading like this using these levels and market structure. Basically that's all this is market structure, support and resistance the market is moving in a direction I'm not even really looking at volume that much here i don't even i haven't even brought um shown you any volume here and you pretty much know what the volume is when you're looking at the candle but the level is really important and yes volume can help you to assess maybe what may be happening at that level so you can also use volume so there's other things that you can do to help you to assess about the level but basically, I don't really need anything on my chart. I don't need this 21. I don't need this 200. I don't need, I do like to keep VWAP on there, um, basically. But as the market moves up and down or whatever it's doing, I like to trade off of these levels. So you'll see, we already violated this level. But if once the trade is over, I already move this down to this level. And that'll be my next trade. Now, that's where the market was moving to before the bell came in, I think. Um, actually, when I started to do this video, it kind of broke even lower. So I could have stayed in the trade and probably made even more. So once we got triggered, it was two candles later, we're $320 into the trade just 10 minutes once we got triggered 15 minutes for us to be done with the trade I also was looking at this here. We were sitting on that 200 EMA. Thought that might be a level where the market may um, 
may hold itself. So I didn't think that we would, so I keep my stop loss here. I didn't think we would pull back that quick. So I'm looking at this next candle, depending on where the next candle high is, that's where I move my stop loss. Um, and that way I could lock in more profit and continue to shoot for my main level. Now I could have taken this even lower and I'll show you as we get into it. So this was the level I was thinking maybe um, this is where my profit's gonna be, that's gonna be it. I already have my level, my stop loss set, so I moved it down into profit and I could just exit the order, take the profit right now if I want to. Don't have to wait for the market to come back. A little bit slow it is right here. But we're pushing for our target. So we are pushing for that take profit target. And here I was really definitely thinking we may not get much farther. And I definitely was going to move my stop loss down to that high and then let the market trigger me if it did. So trading with the um, micros, um, one contract size is going to be basically at one tick. One contact size will be one point two five, a dollar twenty five. Boom! We're getting ready to get profit, but I'm going to move that down a little bit. And if you're using a regular um, E mini contract, it's going to be that one tick will be basically now it all depends what what asset it is but on this s p 500 it's going to be um 1250 but on the micro it's going to be 125 a tenth of it a tenth of that also the margin requirements are much lower and you have a good opportunity to make some money um you can assess how many contracts you want to use and make that profit. So really one point will be on this for the micro will be $5. And I here used four contracts, all right? So I'm still patient here and I could basically, you see, I moved my stop loss down. I actually should have it above the high right here, but I moved it to this level. Usually I would have it above this high right here if I'm, I'm looking for the market to continue down. But here I put it at this level here. I put it at the 200 EMA level. And I'm, I'm thinking like, I'm taking my profit here pretty much. I think I moved down a little bit. I got to see the one to one. I don't know if I drew it again. Did I mark it and show you guys? But you could see $360 right there. Still rolling though. 380. I'm going to move that take profit down. $400 right there. I moved it down a little bit. And I think that was my, I think this was my original one-to-one -one level, or did I move it right to it right there? I moved it down because I want to give this a chance to be violated, but actually I pretty much feel the one-to-one, -one, the market's going to probably start to retrace a little bit, so I should take my profit, um, move the stop loss down maybe, and see if the market can continue going even lower. But we're three candles into the trade which is basically 15 minutes we got triggered on this candle and we're about to get triggered profit right there that's it that's the trade 
So now what I do, basically, guys, is I move this zone down to this level. Look for the market to retrace back to this level. Continue with the move to the downside. Now, if the move is going to end, it'll move higher. Give me a see. This is just what I did. Move down to that level. And now I wait for the market to pull back to this boom up to there and then back down to the downside. Patience in this game will get you to the levels that you're shooting for. You could see we just had patience as we waited on that trade. All right. So I was creating another order to show you and setting it up. So I pretty much would do the same thing here. Now my stop loss moved up. Now I don't want to be, it all depends how high that level is if I'm going to be able to use that stop loss level. And I want to be able to use that level pretty much. And then you can see my one to one ratio. There's my target again. So if I get into the trade up here, my target is going to be right where this level is. Oh, actually, sorry, I moved this down. I got it wrong. <laughs> From here, one, two. If I get into the trade here, this is my target. So that's where my take profit target would be right now. I moved it. As you can see, I moved it down. And that's the whole trade set up again. So now I just look for that same trade to happen. If it doesn't happen, just take it off the table. We're good to go. But that's how I trade the markets. Just being patient, sitting here waiting for that to happen. I can put this order in and then walk away. Don't really have to sit here and watch it. Um, I already know where the stop loss and everything is. You can see how that happens. So, guys, if you want to really learn how to trade the markets, you really need to understand that market structure, those support and resistance levels. All right. And then once you understand that, you need to understand how to get into the market, how to have your patience, how to have discipline, how to have risk management money management and so forth so it's a whole game and this was just part of it so you saw one part of it one aspect of it but don't think that just because you saw me make profit here that that's the way that it's going to be for you because you have to basically be able to control every part of the game money management mental aspect understanding the levels the having your or your um trade journal and everything set up and knowing what you want to do so you need to have your rules I already know my rules i know what i'm doing i know what i want to do i'm going to look for the same thing every time i'm not going to um wander off track and do other things and that's how you also start having this f o m o fomo fear of missing out so you start doing other things besides what you're supposed to be doing with your trade setup and you start to lose out but that's what it is guys that's what i'm trading so I just showed you, hopefully this helps you out. So guys, if you wanna learn how to trade futures or any other market, do the same thing with stocks and so forth, just come to my site, visit fx at oneglance.com and I can help you out. Until then guys, have a great one. God bless, so long.